Claws Deep Research uses multiple AIs all at once. They search across hundreds of sources simultaneously. And when it gives you a response back, it's more comprehensive than you would get from a single AI. But this is just one example that makes Claude unique. And here's the thing, Claude isn't trying to be like ChatGPT. It has all of its own weird strengths that solve actual problems. If you're using it just for basic prompts, you're missing the point. Let me show you what's actually unique and useful. Let's dive in. The first feature I wanna call out isn't unique to Claude, but it has a special way being used inside of Claude, which is deep research. Now, as you know, ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok all have this feature. Inside of Claude, the way you would turn this on is if you go to Claude, under the settings button here, you'd go to this toggle here to turn on research. Once you've turned this on and you see this little icon, that means you've enabled research mode. That means it's going to research for longer, look at different sources. But why is this special? If I had to summarize it in one word, it's breadth. So you can see I did a comparison between the two models. So I had ChatGPT run the same exact search that Claude did. And when you get the results back, you can see that Claude looked at 193 sources, while ChatGPT only looked at 58. Also timing-wise, interestingly enough, Claude finished in four minutes and 37 seconds, while ChatGPT took roughly six minutes. And again, it's not really a better or worse situation. It's more about breadth. So if you're asking a question of AI that needs to be more comprehensive, you need multiple perspectives, I'd recommend leveraging Claude's deep research because you're going to have a wider breadth of sources that are going to be consolidated into the final report that you see. Now, the question here is how? How are they doing this and the other AIs aren't? It comes down to the architecture. So if you go to this next slide, you'll see a basic diagram that walks through the architecture that they use. So on this side, we have the chat. So this is the chat coming in from the user. On this side, we have the architecture. So when the user sends in their chat, when you ask it to research something, it's gonna to go to an orchestrator agent. This orchestrator agent is the lead agent that's gonna do everything else. And when it gets your request, it's gonna break your request down into a series of sub questions. So you've asked it a question such as something around black holes, say. It's gonna break that sub question into a series of sub questions and each sub question is passed off to a sub agent. This agent has its own context window. So it's 200,000 tokens. And that means that it can research excessively on that specific sub question while all the other sub agents do the same thing. After the agent gets everything back, it checks citations, it stuffs stuff into memory over time, but at the end, it's going to send back a request that's gonna be more comprehensive. And that's why this works, because it's a multi-agent architecture where we have multiple sub-agents asking questions. And that's deep research for Claude. So that's one of the features that all the other AIs have, but for Claude, it's somewhat unique when it comes to its breadth, the ability to look at more sources. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me. Two quick things. One, blows a free link to a 30-day AI insight series. Completely free, you'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, I have a series of offerings below to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. The next feature I wanted to call it here is connectors. Again, this is a feature that many other tools have. You can connect your AI to other sources and other tools. But with Claude, I found that they have more connectors that are readily available inside of their desktop app. So I'm specifically talking about the app you download onto your computer and you use on your computer, not the one that's in Chrome or Firefox or whatever else. And I've personally found these connectors extremely useful. And it's not just because there's more of them, but also when you're using a model like Sonnet 4.5 that was just released, its ability to call the right tool at the right time mitigates the chances of the AI calling the wrong tool and frustrating you over and over. And I wanted to walk you through a clear example that I find a lot of value in, and I'm sure you would as well. So if I have a meeting with a client, such as a coaching session, in that session, I immediately have the, the meetings transcribed immediately with Gemini. Once it's transcribed, I have a dedicated Claude project that has already connected to these different connectors. And what it's going to do is I'm going to drop in a transcript, and then it's going to immediately draft an email in a very specific format, the way I prefer my emails drafted after these types of meetings. And then right after it drafts the email, it's then going to connect to a connector which is going to be a connector to Airtable. And it's gonna use Airtable as a way of logging and tracking these different interactions with my clients, acting as a CRM. So it automatically up updates Airtable for me in a very specific location in a very specific way that I prefer. And then finally, I'll send the email that's been drafted via Gmail. Eventually, there likely will be a connector I can then have automatically sent via this draft. But for right now, that's not baked into Claude right out of the box. So that's our second feature that many other tools have, but this is some of the uniqueness to Claude. Next, we have a prompt improver. Again, ChatGPT has a prompt improver, but for Claude, it has its own prompt improver as well. And when it improves the prompt, it's improving, improving it specifically for Claude models. And I wanted to show you an example. So here we have a basic prompt that we'll start with. And this basic prompt is asking for an AI to take a transcript and then write an email in a concise way 
following the format that I prefer, and then giving some more constraints on the length of sentences, etc. So we're going to take this short prompt, and we're going to paste it into the prompt improver. To get to the prompt improver, you need to go to console.anthropic.com. In here, if I paste this in, and I switch on the fact that it's going to be using a thinking model because it will, it's going to take that prompt, and it's going to take all the best practices associated to prompting cloud models, and it's going to inject it into it to expand it out to get a higher quality response from the AI. And you can see immediately that this prompt is obviously a lot longer than what I've given it. At the very top, it gives it a role and a task. Here it has a very specific type of tagging, so the AI knows where the transcript sits. It gives more specifics on what we mean by fifth grade reading level when it comes to the writing style. It even gives it a scratch pad so it can think internally before it responds to us and a variety of other things. As you can see, this is taking all of those best practices and baking it into my prompt so I don't have to be a quote unquote prompt engineer when it comes to prompting cloud models. So that's our third feature. As a quick shout out, uh, I do have a video dedicated to this specific topic of how you can use AI to write prompts for you. So if you're interested, check that out. And then our next one here is projects. So again, GPT, Gemini, Grok, all of them have this feature of projects. But what makes cloud unique? is its ability to take on more files. So the, a lot of these project features for these other models, they're limited on how many files you can shove into a project or a custom GPT. Well, with cloud projects, what they do is they automatically switch on RAG mode once you've exceeded the context window for the AI's brain. So the AI has a limited amount of space in its brain. In this case, it's 200,000 tokens. Once you've exceeded that, when it comes to the files you've dropped into its knowledge base for that project, it'll immediately switch on RAG mode so when the AI gets asked a question, it'll take the question you've asked, and then it'll search on that database in relation to the context you provided it. So you immediately get a 10x increase in the number of files you can put into your project when you want to ask questions of it. So anytime that I have a repetitive task that's really heavy on files, I often use Claude because I know that this ability is there. Our next one here is visuals. So as a lot of you probably know, Claude is very good at creating visuals for presentations, for websites, etc. It does have a favoring towards bluish purple, as you can see from this slide here, but you can, you can kind of prompt that out of it. Now, the interesting thing with visuals is it's highly subjective depending on the task you have at hand. So some people prefer JetGPT, some people prefer Claude, but most of the people I know, and I prefer Claude over the other models, GPT is sometimes getting better, but Claude is by far better when it comes to visuals. Now, the question is why my guess is that it's an emergent capability based on the training data set. So it's a bit of luck and a bit of intention from the company that created Claude. As a quick shout out, if you want to watch another video of me talking about how to create visuals with AI writing code, specifically in Claude and other tools, you can check out this video. But I want to show you a comparison. So let's do a live demo, a side by side between ChatGPT and Claude. So I have these two examples here. So this first one here is ChatGPT. And this is a visual representing the growth of gigawatts usage for energy from a specific blog. So this blog is from Sam Altman. I took the blog, I gave it a very brief prompt, and then it created this visual. So when I look at this, I actually think it's really compelling, and I love the fact that it's animated. What you can do with your presentations if you're using PowerPoint or something else, is you can screen record this animation, and then you can insert that screen record into your slides, so you then have an animated element to your presentations. So that's the GPT version. And this here is the Claude version. So I'm not sure which one you would prefer. I actually almost prefer the GPT one more than Claude in this instance, but it's important to note that it's in this instance. So if you run this a series of times like I have, I've used both tools probably hundreds of times for visuals. Usually, the most of the time, Claude wins out, but sometimes, and happening more frequently, GPT wins out. So it's important to note on these more subjective measurements that you should definitely A-B test all different models to see which one resonates most, most with your taste and what you prefer about visuals. And as a quick recap of the different features that are available in Claude and elsewhere, but what makes them unique is we have deep research, where if you want more breadth and a more holistic perspective to the research question you're asking, use their deep research variant because you get access to more sources because of the architecture behind the scenes. Next, we have connectors. So they have more connectors in the desktop, desktop app than most places. And also, the Sonnet 4.5 accuracy and calling tools within Claude is very effective. So if you don't want to have to deal with the inaccuracies of using connectors with AI, I'd recommend trying that out. Next is the Prompt Improver. This is a Prompt Improver dedicated specifically to Claude models, taking the best practices for their models. So you can access that in the developer portal. We have projects. So if you have file-heavy tasks that are repetitive, then you probably want to consider Claude because it can 10x the amount of storage that one has access to because it defaults or automatically switches to RAG mode once you've exceeded the in-context window for the AI's brain. And finally, visuals. You may want to try out the visuals for Claude, see if you like that more than GPT, and then use it for that specific task. And that's it. 
So if you enjoyed this, please be share it with your friends. And remember, two things. First, below is a link to a free 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You will get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below is a series of offerings that I provide so we can see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, you should probably watch the next video around here that the YouTube gods thinks that you'll love. See you next time.